and hello, hello we... everybody. My name is Markiplier, <laughs> and it's Markiplier's friend. Yeah. When do we start? I don't actually know how to start it. We can open it and be like, if you're seeing this, this means we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Walter White. <laughs> yeah. Which file? This is an important question. Which file? Which file do we choose? Uh, I think the cooking one. We gotta cookin'? pick the cooking one because we're, we're cooking. Because we're cooking. Yeah. We're actually gonna cook Kazooie. So now we have to watch the intro cinematic. We actually have no choice because the first time you boot up the game and you start it, this is before perfect. you have a save file, you have to watch the whole thing. <laughs> I was so creeped out about this game, bro. Did I ever tell you that like I was when I was th I was like three or four years old and I would constantly have nightmares about this game. I would always play it, but then have nightmares about the witch because like. I couldn't. I could barely read, let alone read this scrolling text this fast at the time. Yeah. So like, I, I, I got my parents when I was five or six years old to hide <laughs> the cartridge from me because I knew I couldn't help myself. I was such a responsible kid. <laughs> I had them hide both Banjo Kazooie and Tui from me. I love that illiteracy is also like the scariest part of it. Yeah, the I fact know, right? That we couldn't read to understand that makes it so scary. Um. I also used to have nightmares, believe it or not, about this game, but it was always the the music after you died in the game was terrifying. Uh, and, like when you get a game over or like... Yeah, and when it would do the cutscene of like oh, what right. happens yeah, and when like you when lose. Yeah, even when you press save and quit, it shows you that. The, yeah, that cutscene yeah. is, is terrifying. Oh. When you can't read, man, like a, a little girl just gets locked away in a fucking freezer and that, that's all you can tell is happening. And like I had like the rush and shut off the game as soon as I would die, and I would just like not play. Like I would just as soon as I die, it's over. I'm done playing N64. Yeah. All right, Banjo Kazooie, the most rated game the, in the, history. Yeah, the most rated gem of all time. <laughs> it was underrated, and then a bunch of people rated it. Do you actually think it was ever underrated? Do you ever think that it had a like a poor perception, or people didn't give it enough credit for? I don't really know, to be honest, because, like, I grew up in the era of Banjo-Kazooie video essays. That was genuinely just, like, an era of YouTube, and I was, I was deep in it. It only felt, to me, it only felt underrated in the sense that if the mainstream public didn't know, of, like, didn't know about it, like, that's how it felt underrated. It's like someone who kind of knew games may not know Banjo-Kazooie in that era, so in that sense, it was underrated, but it's like everybody I knew really liked the game. Yeah. And now I wonder if you if you think back to like the current era of gaming, or maybe maybe it's just us as gamers have evolved to a point where our particular attachment to this style of gameplay uh, as a collectathon. I wonder how that is aged. How the people who grew up with N sixty four and GameCube and it being like collectathons were a thing, and it was be a main feature of why you would play these games. If people I, are still connected to that, I think you could, the, the launch of ukulele was pretty uh, pretty telling for that because like all the reviews for that game. I don't know if you ever played it or like looked at the reviews for it or anything, but Never. all the reviews were like some. There were some valid criticisms, but a lot of them were just like collectathons fucking suck, dog. Like, like that was <laughs> the root of most of the criticism. You hate to see it because like when I think back to all like the games that I I, I would hold highest in regard, almost for like N64 and into GameCube, they all felt like collectathons. You know, Sonic the Adventure 2, yeah, kinda, you're collecting right? emblems or emeralds and rings, and in Pokemon, you're collecting Pokemon. And obviously, for Pokemon, it may not be the central theme, but Edge Kazooie it was, and um, I don't know, it felt like I just hold the idea of collecting things so highly, but I wonder if, if I would side, I never played ukulele, but if I would side with the reviewers in the sense that maybe I'm just not that's, into it's worth collecting. trying sometime, actually. I I think it's not as good as the old Banjo games, and I, the, the way they decided to do it, the way they decided to structure their levels was very poor, in my opinion. Like, it was a total miss. But what they ended up doing was, like... So it's the same kind of idea where you get pages instead of jiggies, whatever, they're like little golden pages. Uh, <laughs> you get... <laughs> You get, you get the pages and you can open up a level. And so when you open up a level the first time, 
It's like a, oh shit, I hit A and hit the tutorial. Okay, I'm doing the tutorial. <laughs> I forgot, Fuck. I've never played this game before. Fuck. <laughs> Alright. Um. Oh, you can't do anything. <laughs> They literally just like hold. <laughs> they hold all the controls away from. They gatekeep every button from you until you have a. He pops out and he's like, "This is how you move forward." <laughs> uh, you you get pages and you can like go and open up a level, right? But you open up what is like a minimal version of the level, like a, like a maybe like 30, 40 percent of the, of the full level. So you collect some pages, and feathers, quills, or like notes. Uh, you collect those. And eventually you get enough to unlock the full version of the level. So then it's the same level, but it's way bigger. And their whole thought process was like, some people prefer the Banjo-Kazooie more like tightly designed smaller levels. Some people prefer the Banjo-Tooie sprawling connected levels. So they found a way to do both. And the problem is, the minimal versions of the levels were terrible. And there's no reason to ever play in them if you had enough pages <laughs> to open up the big one. So it's like... This is all a classist issue. It all comes back to capitalism. Yeah, yeah. And the need to use pages as currency yeah. to unlock more. That's true. And I never, I, ne I never thought about the allegory there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, oh, that's what he's asking me to do. You know what? I'm not really. I wasn't really paying too much attention to the the reading, like the font, the and the discussion that was happening. And I'm just wondering why. If you're running in the spot, and I'm thinking, like, is this game that bad? That <laughs> I don't remember them, like, completely not having functional movement at all. So it's an overrated gem. Yeah, now I'm officially a hater of the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the war against Banjo. On the side of the war. I'm on the war against Bottles right now, because I hit A by accident. And also, I don't think I have an L button bound right now, so I can't skip the perfect. text. I have to hold A. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> could have been worse. You could have had, like, no A button bound or something, or no B that, button. I mean, that in... that, then we'd be like those uh, challenge YouTubers. Can you beat Banjo-Kazooie without jumping? Yeah, or like Pan and Koic. You know, like the Mario... Oh, yeah, yeah. The like Parallel that. Universe guy? Where he's, like, trying to beat Mario 64 without any A presses. Yeah. And they're trying to see if they can get all 20 stars without pressing the A button once. What I love about this game, they just turned everything into an enemy. Yeah, it, you, you can just put Google out, googly eyes on anything. Like, what a way to use googly eyes effectively. Everything became an enemy. Onions, carrots, trees. In, in ukulele, googly eyes themselves are an enemy because they can attach to anything <laughs> and turn it into a googly eye. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Stop rolling, I feel sick. Honestly, Kazooie plays Melee, and I can tell. Yeah. Do you think Bottles is hated? As a general character? I think Bottles is a... hated by Kazooie. Sure. Oh my god. Do you know what that Cauliflower's name is? Does it have a name? Yeah, it's Cauliflower. Wobble. I'm sorry, Cauliflower? Wobble? Cauliflower. Wobble. Beat his ass. Yeah. Beat his ass. Keep it out of our Me game. Melee players when they hear wobble. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh my god, shut the fuck up, bottles. I'm sorry <laughs> I pressed the button on you. I feel like the way that people see bottles is you know those posts that talk about like the most hated characters in modern media? And then Skylar from Breaking Bad is <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. like always at like the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like it's like at the top, you see bottles as well. I I like bottles. I don't have a problem with bottles. I thought jam jars was funnier, but I still like bottles. Okay. They made just a rock standing there an enemy. Yeah, it has it has the eyes. It can't do anything but blink. <laughs> what an existence, right? And then he gets broken anyway. Like he's <laughs> shattered regardless of his he's outstanding in his field. Now this aesthetic this, like, in this scenery here is something that's so locked in my brain. The idea of, like, scaling uh, the hill to get to the bridge before Gruntilda's yeah. castle. Like, this is, to me, even though Bottles is drawn out, and if you don't have an L button bound, or if you were playing on N64 and you, like, ate the L button back then, um, it would be very drawn out. Wait, but, like, this... The L button? 
Yeah, if you like ate the L button. You know like how kids just eat controllers? I don't know if you ever ate something on your controller growing up, but like I did. Not to the point of non-functioning. One time I was playing N64, Mario 64 with my sister, and I just super upset I died in Bomb on Battlefield and just ate the wire of my controller. Just bit it in half. All, all, all right. I promise I grew up well adjusted afterwards, but <laughs> I mean I've, you know I've nibbled on wires before, but like damn. You had a little taste, right? But I went for the whole bite. That's great. Um, it's fun fact, as punishment for doing that, she made me eat spaghetti with, with orange pop inside it. Like, she <laughs> made me spaghetti and then poured orange pop in it and said I had to eat it. <laughs> that... So, wait, dude, was it, like, sauce? Or just, like, literal plain, plain spaghetti and orange soda? I, I think there was a sauce in there, but... Uh, Definitely just mixed with the sauce. Anywho, I'm right. not really close with her anymore, and I don't know if there's, if there, if it's related or not. But that being said, this is how a tutorial, like this initial level, to me, and I, I don't know what it is. I've always liked this, and Mario 64 was the same way. Um, this type of like open world learning, like learn through doing, and, and and especially when it comes to like level choosing, that is the way to go. You know, like, the I, idea of you get to choose what level you're going to explore, or you can go back at any time to recollect things or recomplete things is awesome. Yeah, I do think that's kind of a... Why well, can't... I can usually get up here. You gotta be able to do this. Yeah. Okay. You, you're supposed to. What changed? I think... Wait, wait let me see if this... I'm, I'm trying another speedrunning trick. Fuck. Alright, never mind. <laughs> Did you hit it? Did we lose I, time or gain time? Uh, we lost a lot of time. We lost time. Not only did I miss it, I missed it three times. <laughs> so we lost a lot of time. But there's a little pixel, like that corner pixel, if you land on it, you can just jump straight over bottles and skip that that text box. What a sad reality where the speedrun revolves around how little can we talk to bottles. Like, ignoring him is the, so is the time save. Are, are you saying that with the knowledge of what the speed run actually entails like the main speed running trick because you actually just hit the nail on the head pretty much is that actually the <laughs> because what what speed no, runners man. do is they have a file that is on grunty's furnace fund like at the end of the game and they do there's this weird specific trick where if you game over in a mini game like you know how like there's like random like you have to fight boom box or whatever yeah, and you die, you game over in the minigame. When you start the next file, th there's it, it didn't quite clear the state of the internal state of the game properly. So if you start a new file and you go into Mumbo's Mountain, you instantly have the entire move set. This is actually crazy. I had no idea. Yeah, so literally, you talk to bottles one single time in the entire game, and it's right at the beginning, and then you press B to skip the tutorial, <laughs> and he never shows up again. Look. Bottles is in his own lane. He's not trying to curry the favor of anyone. He's he's squelching in his goop for sure. He still also, talks to you because like you when you when you collect a note, he's like, "That's a note. Here's how you use it." <laughs> All he said was whoop, 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 and then it canceled it out. Yeah. Um, Jiggy sounds like substitute teacher Germa. You know the sound he makes. Oh yes, Germa's... yeah, it does kind of. Yeah, it does. That's... that's what the Jiggy sounds like. I wonder if that's if that was the inspiration. Okay, how do we solve this puzzle? Okay, good. You, you think... You think Germ has ever played Banjo Kazooie? Um... No. But I think that this is absolutely... He must have. I just feel like if he did... I would know, or like, we would know. The general, it would be more well known as like, a game that he played. Because this really yeah, feels true, like... Probably. Like, the sounds feel like... He could have, if you left Germa in a room with a typewriter for an infinite amount of time, eventually he would recreate every single sound and character noise in this. Book. Okay. It doesn't really look like that far of a jump. It you get like a it lot totally of momentum. Is, though. All right, I'm gonna try. It. 